Okay. One last systems check. Deuterium input. Check. Tritium output. Check. Polarum. Check. Injection rate settings. Check. Over one billion RF. Check. Let's light this candle or whatever other generic line I want to use for this. Zoop. Ooh. It's a. It's 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 very square for a sun, which I guess is appropriate. Yeah. You see that it completely destroyed the hull room. It's currently air cooled. Injection rate. Okay, this, this plasma heat is going to go down a little bit until it stabilizes. And eventually this... I, I think... Oh no, I thought the case heat and the core heat should eventually equalize, but I guess not. Yes, but you see this thing is building up power at a ridiculous rate because it cannot output it fast enough onto this cable. But that... is a working fusion reactor. There we go. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to turn off the gas burners. And now our entire base should be running off of this one thing. Yes, yeah, the lasers have started building up again. It's still energy positive in its energy bank because, again, that power cable can't output it fast enough. Let's see, would it, would it be under statistics? Hmm. Where would I find its current power output? Ah, here we are. Yeah, producing over 200,000 RF per tick. So that's roughly the equivalent of 10 gas burning generators. And I think one gas burning generator was more than a than this ultimate cable could handle. So I'm desperately going to need some sort of energy sink for this, which is why I have made this gigantic tank of lithium here. Yes. And it's currently hard to tell if I'm if I'm gaining lithium faster than I'm spending it in tritium because it's nighttime. So let's put it back to daytime. There we are. That should reactivate the solar neutron activator. I am... At, at, at an injection rate of 2, I should be earning tritium and lithium faster than I'm spending it. So, first of all, yes, we are keeping ahead of the game on tritium. And yes, we are keeping ahead of the game on lithium. And that's kind of the important one. Deuterium... If, if I need more deuterium, I can just build another pump. It's no problem. So, I have this big tank of liquid lithium here. And you see on the bottom here that I separated out the input and output valves. So, you know, this, this tank is acting as a buffer storage for lithium. That's still going. Has the temperature stabilized yet? Almost. Okay, the uh, the statistics said that at a minimum injection rate of 2, it should be passively generating 200,000 RF per tick. So, I imagine that's where it'll stabilize. And I can get it hotter by increasing the injection rate. And I'm not sure what the minimum temperature for the plasma is before it fizzles out and you have to restart it. That would be something I would have to look up. Either way. 
yeah, I, I suspect that this one cable coming off of it is not enough to actually feed my entire power system, actually. So I really need to build that battery. So, the next and I think final quest in what the world, or how the world enhances, is to build these basic induction casing parts. Although, obviously, the one I'm actually going to build is going to be using Ultimate because these are tiered just like everything else in Mechanism. Yes, it's a big multi-block battery that can go from 3x3x4 by by to 18x18x18. 18 18 18. <laughs> and its statistics, how fast it can input and output power, how much power it can hold, that's determined by the blocks you put inside of it. So... These basic induction casings are fairly easy. It's just steel plate around a tablet. Of course. I almost thought that life was sane for a second there. And there we are. And how many do I need for the quest? 16. Really? I'm out of steel plate. Huh. Well, that is probably going to be a BRB moment because I'm going to need crap tons of steel plating. Maybe it's about time that I made a proper automated steel setup. Hmm. You know what? Yeah, let's do that. So, a bit of a divergence today, but, uh, well, I need that steel. And don't worry, this is just something I'm going to be doing while that steel plating is ticking away, because, I mean, I am going to need that battery to power my base. So, the first, why are these, oh no, that was just a graphical error. So, the first step of steel production is going to be... I am going to need a source of charcoal, which means I need to make an automated wood farm. Now... I could do that the Batania way, which I think would actually be the easiest way. So let's do that. Gonna need a couple earth runes, lots of orange and yellow. Okay. Yes. Now what these Ranin carpuses are going to do is these are going to act as the things that place the saplings. There we are. Really, where did the upper full urn go? Hmm. I must have used it for something and forgot to replace it. There we are, that's better. Now, for this I'm actually going to want my Manaseer monocle so I can lay these out properly, I think. And I'm not sure if four will be enough because I'm going to want a pretty large area so that this is relatively fast as a farm. And now for each ran and carpus, I'm going to want two pieces of dirt because that'll also determine what blocks they place on. And I think I'll lay out the wood farm, like, right around here. Yeah. Somewhere nearish to where the steel will be produced. So, two blocks of dirt. Ranon carpus. And that'll tell the Ranon carpus that it wants to place on dirt blocks. So, this is its area of effect. This is how far it will place things without any mana. It goes one, two, three, four, it looks like. No, farther than that. I wish the Mana Seer monocle was a bit more, um, helpful. Oh no, that's the area that it looks for items in. The area that it places in, I think, is just the four. Which is another thing the Manaseer monocle could help with. 
Ugh. Actually, let me look up the range of the Ran and Carpus properly. Let me check the wiki real quick. Okay, so this is in fact the range of the Ran and Carpus for placing items. So this is actually one or two of these might be good enough for an entire wood farm. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I desperately underestimated how far the Ran and Carpus places things because I was misremembering it. It only looks for items to place within two blocks of itself. So, it needs to be supplied saplings close to, but it can place them quite far away. Actually, yeah, I think that, that one of them is, is good enough. So now I just need crap tons of dirt. So, these will be the dimensions of the wood farm. This is how far the Ran and Carpus can place. Let me just get a ton of dirt. Replace my lovely amulet. There, that's better. Okay, there we go. All the dirt is placed down. Now, I just need a mechanism to repeatedly drop saplings into the Ran and Carpus's grabbing area, and a mechanism to cut trees down. Now, cutting trees down should be fairly easy. There's a golem for that. And just for thematic purposes, let's make it a wood golem. He will be slaying his own kind, yes. <laughs> okay, first of all, get our golem. Second of all, we want a core of... Not harvest. Really? I could have sworn I've researched this one. Yeah, it's a core of chop. Ah, okay. It's an infusion of the harvest core. That makes sense. So first of all, I need to make a new axe of the stream. Two water, diamond, and great wood, okay. And then I'll just need three regular old iron axes. Really? Out of Arbor? Well, I suppose I haven't been melting great wood to get my precantatio for a while. I've mostly been melting nether wart. Or sandstone. So I guess it would make sense that I would eventually run out of Arbor for, like, the two things I need it for. Okay. Axe of the stream. Oop. No, not you. Yeah, sometimes the goop gets stuck. 
And that sprite will actually stay there for a good couple of minutes before it, like, fades out. But it doesn't affect anything mechanically. Okay, here we are. Golem Animation Core. Now, the most important step. What do we name it? Um, who needs a name? Who needs a name? Okay. This golem will be Kenick Chris. Hello. Now, let's just put you right here. I don't know if his default range will cover this entire area. Hopefully it will. Your home is here. Here is your core. If anything, I think it's actually cuter than the straw golems. He's so blocky. Okay, ran in carpus there. And now, if I throw saplings at it, it should start planting them, and he should cut them down. Yeah, let's go for good old-fashioned oak. Might as well get a source of apples while I'm at it, you know? Yes, you see it kind of places them in a semi-random scattershot pattern. And actually, before it starts filling out, I'd better I better place some solignolias. Just so that I don't mess with the farm whenever I'm in the area. The Everfull Urn doesn't fill up the Petal Apothecary quite fast enough. I wish it was, like, instant. Eh. Can't have everything that you want. Okay, so these things have a range of four blocks. Let's put these three in, and that should, yeah. That should prevent magnet across that entire area. Mm -hmm. There, that should be a pretty good coverage of it. Ah, we have our first tree. Does our golem react? No. Hmm. Oh. He just took a little while. Yes. And see how they kind of tree capitate? And they cause fast leaf decay. So. We have kind of a harvest pattern set up. Let's see if he can reach the edges of the area. Yes, he looks like he can. Okay, so this tree farm should be pretty good once I get a means of picking up the items and processing and cycling the saplings. Yes, that fast leaf decay effect looks like it's from the axe of the stream. So this, this little golem guy is making use of the tool that's built into his core. That's good. No. Hmm. I may want to use a hopper hawk, just a single floating hopper hawk that is infused with mana, because I'm not sure if a single hopper hawk could quite cover this entire area without mana, which means that I want this to probably have a uh, endo flame or two running off the wood to keep it fed. Yeah. 
Okay, I can do that. First of all, I need the hopper hawk itself, and I think I'll make this... Mm, yeah, I'll make this a floating hopper hawk. Of course, I'm out of proper mystical flowers to make floating flowers, so I need to go and shear some. Actually, I have somewhat of an idea. Okay, so... I think I'll actually be using two hopper hawks. Okay, so I'm gonna have an open crate right here. And the golem is only one block tall, so he can walk right under it. Hopper hawk... Yeah. Oh wait, floating hopper hawk, excuse me. Right here. And I forgot an item frame. I need an item frame for this. Some saplings and let's get, I don't know, just a abyssal block. It's generally good practice to block off the top of your hoppers. Not only will it prevent them from sucking up something random that gets dropped in the area, but... Um, if you have fast craft, it actually speeds up the game slightly by stopping the hopper's algorithm that looks for items to pick up. So, item frame with that. So now, if I drop any saplings within a relatively wide area, even if it's outside the Ran and Carpus's range, it should be picked up by that hopper and then dropped next to the Ran and Carpus. Ah, there's a problem. The Hopper Hawk is picking it up faster than, than the Ran and Carpus can place them. So I need to place this thing on like a delay. Okay, that can be done. I just need like an Automagy Hourglass or something. Alternately, uh, it is possible to manufacture delay in with Batania itself. Um, if a flower like a hopper hawk is placed on mycelium instead of dirt, it will operate slower. So flowers that are on dirt will take precedence over it. But then I would have to make another floating hopper hawk with mycelium instead of dirt in the craft. So I will just do this somewhat more, somewhat more magically. Okay, and now I just need to configure it to go like, I don't know, maybe once every three seconds. Since that's on the hopper. Oh no, I, that's the wrong pulse. I need it on, on negative pulse. And it seems to be facing the wrong way. These things only send redstone out on, like, one direction. There we go. No, three seconds is too fast. Four seconds? Oh! Oh shoot, I need it on the on the hopper hawk as well. In fact, the hopper hawk is what I need it on, not the not the hopper itself, derp. Okay, let's try 3 seconds again. I'd like it to play slightly more than that each time. God, Ren and Carpuses are slow. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. All it needs to do is prevent these things from despawning.
And in fact, I would only like one stack to be kept in storage. Oop, never mind. Okay, I guess five stacks will be kept in storage. It doesn't particularly matter. Only only ten seconds worth of entities will be down at any one time, so it won't produce that much lag. Okay. So what'll happen is this hopper hawk will be picking up only saplings and putting it into this thing to be to be placed down on the random carpus and then placed in the farm. And that will only store one hopper's worth of saplings maximum, minus, you know, however many it's placing down at any one time. So eventually that'll fill up, and all the excess saplings will be sent into storage for use as saplings. I don't know. Exhale of the Horned One is a mildly useful witchery gas. So. And this hopper doesn't necessarily need to be fed, because... It should have a fairly good range just for picking up saplings and ensuring it's always positive. Um, sapling positive in terms of circulation. Let's put on our Manasier monocle and see if its coverage area is... It should be, like, fairly good. Yeah, see, all those saplings ended up sucked up into there. Wait, where did the... Item frame go. Where did the item frame go? That was freaking weird. Do leaves knock off item frames? Hmm. In any case. Oh, wow. I, actually, I was wrong. This hopper hawk more than covers the area, so this doesn't need mana at all to operate. Okay. So next up, underground, I'm going to have the the proper item, item suction and processing area. Just gonna, like, I don't know. Drill out a little bit. Clear out a space for myself. I don't know why I'm digging this tunnel. It doesn't necessarily need to link to storage through through piping. It can do it through mirrors. Yes, for the moment it's just going to be wasting wood because because that's just how it's going to happen. Okay, so first I'm going to need another Hopper Hawk. And this one I think I'll put on Mycelium so it's slower than the other one. Even with, even with that other Hopper Hawk being on such a delay, Mycelium should be so slow that, that the Hopper up there mostly stays positive in terms of input anyway. Okay, just going to have that right there. This one golem is a little bit overworked by this area. Maybe I need to give him some upgrades. Maybe I need to make him like a like a proper... Yeah, I think the Greatwood golem might be a little bit too slow and a little bit too wimpy for this. No offense, Greatwood golem. And this thing lost its item frame again. Um... Okay, so item frames are stupid. Great. This should be an easy enough fix, though. I just kind of need to... Get one goddamn moment. Place the frame. And then... Build a shield around it. There. That should keep it safe. Yep, I think I need a better golem than this. Well, there was one golem that I was kind of looking at trying out. 
These silverwood golems from Gadamancy. Yeah. They look like they might be pretty darn good. Yeah, silverwood golems are actually quite an infusion. A lot of semi-rare thumbcraft ingredients. Quite a lot of Essentia, and it's very hot. It's it's high instability. So, yep. It's just a good thing that my thumbcraft setup is freaking awesome. Hey, we might as well go all the way. Make this an advanced golem. Zoop. No. Okay, gunpowder, brain, redstone, glowstone jar. Gunpowder, glowstone, redstone, brain jar. Yeah. So I guess silverwood golems cannot be made advanced. Well, that's a little bit crap. Oh, well. I guess that's what I get for playing with modded golems. Mark II. Yes. Okay, and if I just boop you up. Yes, that separates him from his core. Okay. So, yeah, he looks quite a lot like the wood golem, just... Oh, he even has the silverwood uh, heart node on him. That's interesting. And he has three upgrade slots. So just kind of nudge you out of the way, put the random carpus back. Hmm. Looks like he's chopping at the same rate. Maybe he needs some other upgrades. Or maybe we need more than one golem doing this. Or maybe I just need to accept that this will just be a wooded over area. Okay. One upgrade. Two upgrade. Let's see if these do anything. No, that doesn't seem to be making him break the wood any faster. Eh, maybe a smidge faster. Yeah, and you know, this... I don't think this two hopper hawk setup is going to work, because this chest is picking up far too many things. So, maybe instead what I'll do is I'll place the chest here. And what that should do is, because this hopper hawk or because this hopper has an item frame on it, it'll prioritize saplings. And only when it is full will saplings go into this chest. While by default, everything else should go into the chest as well. So we should see that hopper, that hawk picking up um, wood now as well. And putting it into the chest, yeah. Okay, well, uh, Kenick Mark II seems to be keeping up with the with the growth. He has kind of derpy eyes. I like it. Yes, and this new hopper setup seems to be kind of reducing confusion. Of course, I'm going to have to pipe this underground, so might as well make a a cover just to make sure that the golem has nowhere to fall into. Let's think about how we're going to do item processing. I think what I would like to do is... Uh, 
I think I would like to send half of my wood to storage immediately. Just because, you know, having an infinite source of wood is nice. I have lots of recipes that still call for wood. Technically they call for spruce wood, but I don't think applied energistics should care. So, half of my wood will go to storage, half of it will be burned to charcoal. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like the right ticket. Now, how to manage that? Looks like that hopper hawk doesn't quite cover the entire area that leaves can fall in, but that's okay. I think the way it's going to have to be done is by making a buffer chest and using some logistical sorters. Yeah. And I'm going to need a, a melding mirror for how to send this stuff to storage. Let me go make that real quick. Ooh, that's a big oak tree. If he's using the same algorithm as Axe of the Stream, he should be able to cut those down no problem. Yeah, see how it's deconstructing from top to bottom with the branches coming first? Axe of the Stream is awesome like that. Let's put our buffer chest right here. Oh, and it needs to be configurated. To pull. There we are. So now the buffer chest is filling with all the stuff that the secondary uh, output chest, or that the hopper hawk is picking up. So let's put output to storage over here. Yes. So. Actually, yeah, let's have that on dark blue. No, that's not. Oh, it's not outputting to that because it's not actually linked to storage yet. Derp. Which is a good thing because I need to set up chests for oak wood and apples. Drawers for it, rather. Because this is going to be an infinite source. And always practice safe storage. And I'm probably going to have to reprogram all of my things that use specifically spruce wood to use specifically oak wood. But that'll, that'll come up later. So... I think those drawer keys are in storage now. Look, hide, and finally place on the wall. Now, oh wait, first, 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 I should clear out all my oak wood and then immediately place it right back in so it's resorted into the drawer. And all of my apples do the same. There we are. Everything's being properly stored in the drawers. And now, if I place my magic eye in the melding mirror... Yes! So... 
And actually, I want to delete oak wood off of this. The other thing that I wanted to put on there was oak saplings, but I'll do that later, because it'll be a while before they start to come into this chest. This logistical sorter is the one that oak wood will be drawn from. And I'm going to have this on Round Robin, because it's going to be going to two different destinations. One of which will be the Melding Mirror, and the other will be a processing area for turning it into charcoal. So. And actually, let's set this thing to stack size 8. Not that it particularly matters, since I don't think oak will be coming in evenly eight at a time. But, you know, just to make sure. So, it'll switch between sending the oak wood directly to storage and sending it to this place where it'll be processed into charcoal. Now I just need to make the machines to turn it into charcoal. And I think I would like to do that with a big array of coke ovens so that I can finally get an infinite source of creosote as well. And I think I'm just going to start by moving this one. Well, that silverwood golem isn't really keeping up. It needs another friend. So we're bringing back out the, the wood golem after all. Although, with a new name. This is roughly centerish, so your home should be fine just here. There we go. And hopefully that should keep up. This is getting a little bit ridiculous, but maybe three golems can keep up. Yes. This is a clay golem made from bricks. Might as well try out all the golems while I'm at it, you know? Okay. I've been building up a big collection of coke ovens. You can see this mess of piping that's bringing wood into them and taking charcoal out, as well as dealing with the creosote oil. Uh, right now, the only thing that's slowing it down, really, is I have to wait on seared bricks in my big smeltery. But yes, you see I have mechanical pipe running down underground over there. It's going to the big creosote tank. So eventually this thing will be full and I'll have to like void the creosote I imagine. But I have routed the charcoal into these bloomery furnaces here. And for my next trick I am just going to feed it the rest of the resources from my ME net. And I have to set this to pull because you can see it's already drawing the charcoal out of it. So I'm going to tell this thing to stock... I want to stock more than just one of each. And I'm just going to steal a line off of the bees. Yes, I think this line is running over to... Um, it's running over to where the combs from the old jungle bee project is. That's how it's drawn into the network. So, we just link this up. And there we have it. Ah, yes, and I need to give it a crafting card so I can craft the sand. There we are, and that should be keeping the bloomery furnaces nice and full. There we are, you see that they're running at full tilt. And I guess I'll just put all this charcoal away. Yep. 
Yep, the Coven Witches seem to especially like visiting in this area. And I'll disconnect this. This was just a line from uh, before I automated Enriched Iron. I would occasionally connect this chest to draw off a little bit of Enriched of uh, Rot Iron in order to make it. So, now I have these Bloomeries linked up to this chest because I am going to build... Hello. That's a very awkward place for you to stand. I am going to build a couple more of these... of these Infernal Blast Furnaces, and I'm going to have this Logistical Sorter on a round robin distributing to them fairly evenly so that I can get uh, steel production more parallelized and produce it slightly faster. I think my goal here is going to be... I'm going to try and get a total of six infernal blast furnaces operating in concert because i believe they each take one ignis off of this energized node here so i'll have five of them producing steel and i'll have this one in reserve for when i need to make refined steel that's just going to be a lot of building it'll be boring work i will be right back okay got these things all laid out only really <laughs> Only really bad part of that was waiting for the heat blood staff to recharge each time to to boop these things into existence. So, total of five of these on here. You see that I used some V relays to stretch out the the V distribution, so these should all be getting Ignis V. And we have all the Bloomery Furnaces pretty much permanently stocked. I think everything is keeping up in production. They are constantly producing rot iron coming into this chest here. And this Logistical Sorter is set to round robin and one at a time. And it will distribute to everyone. Yes, hello Andromeda. Glad you could be here for this momentous occasion. Yes. And there you see that once these things started requesting V, the V laser there turned red because it's pulling. You see the sparks coming off of the V relays going into the furnaces. And they are just filling up these chests. And those are all piping down into a melding mirror. So that's going into storage, and yes, I do have a compacting drawer on my drawer wall. So, we have automated steel! <sighs> now to actually go build the damn thing that needs it. <laughs> 